We're kind of hitting a little bit on this on Friday night. And then it came up here and there because we Friday we're talking about prophecy, visions, and dreams. And God said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. He said, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And these are the last days. And what we're going to look into today, all this came about through, or it came to be revealed to us through prophecy, dreams, and visions. What we're going to look at today. <laughs> we looked at how in Isaiah chapter 46, I believe, God said, there's none like me declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not done yet. So when, when we're in contact with God, like we are, we're going to find out some things that have not yet happened yet. We're going we're gonna to be looking into some things that God has declared, but have not come to pass yet. Look at, it, look at this in Revelation 5. Not only does God give dreams, visions, and prophecy, but right here is where God actually caught up John into heaven. I mean, talk about a vision. <laughs> he was caught up there. And Jesus told him to write a book about it. And that's what we have right here in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Right here we're going to read. Look at 5 and 9. <laughs> Now, these are saints in heaven, right? These are the redeemed, because they said, and they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God. See, these are the redeemed. These are the saints that, that lived upon the earth. How many of you are some of the redeemed? Amen. Someone say, I am redeemed. I am redeemed. So it says, they, they sang in your song, and said, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God. Now they were singing to Jesus. They said, You have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. But here's an interesting thing. Saints, this is what we touched on a little bit. And God told me to break it down today. Some of the events of the end times that are, that are yet to happen were in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. And, and verse 10 says, And have made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now while we're talking about one day going to heaven, like our brother Dan went, while we're dreaming about the day of the rapture happening, where we're going to be caught up in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, those that are alive and remain, saints in heaven are praising Jesus and saying, you made us kings. We praise your name, Jesus. You redeemed us and we shall reign upon the earth. Now, how are, they, how are these saints going to reign upon the earth, the ones that are in heaven? Now, we're part of these saints. But we're going to go up to heaven. But we're going to look at this today real good. See, everyone will have a good understanding about what's about to happen in the future. 
And what's going on right now? Because the saints in heaven are singing a song about coming back to the earth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why would they want to come back to this earth? Well, God's got some plans for this earth before the whole end is going to be wrapped up here. Let's look at this again, verse 9. So it's very clear. And they sent, sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy. They were singing this to take the book. They sang a new song. You know how sometimes we're here in the church, like today we sing a few good new songs. They just come by the Spirit. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God. By thy blood, out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. So these are people that come from every nation, every kind of people, every tongue. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Not to be confused with heaven. <laughs> There's no confusion here. There's no doubt what they're saying. Now before this happens, we are going to be in heaven. There's no telling how long, you know, before this is going to happen. Because no man knows the day or the hour. But we are going to experience heaven before we come back to the earth. Now, when we come back to the earth, we're not coming back to the earth to stay now. We're coming back to the earth to reign with Christ, but it's not permanent upon the earth. <laughs> the earth is going to experience some glorious changes and transformations through the power of God. And we are going to help Bring in these changes with Christ, with Jesus. Now, the saints in heaven have told Jesus, and we're part of these saints, that you have made us unto our God, you have made us kings and priests. So, now, God has made us kings and priests, but we're not kings like the kings of the earth. We're kings after the kingship and lordship of Jesus. Our king, Jesus, is the king of love. <laughs> he's the king of all grace. No, the Bible says he's the king of kings. He has made us kings and priests. But we are not kings that, that walk around boasting in our position. We can only be made a king after the manner of Jesus' kingship if we walk in his ways. If we serve one another. If we are willing to wash each other's feet symbolically, spiritually, and if, if need be, naturally too. Now go to Revelation 20 and verse 6. I'm telling you, I hope that everybody listens to this because God gave me a very clear uh, word for the end times here. Some people, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of saints don't think too much about the events of the end time, and some saints, that's all they think about. But, you know, God wants us to have a good balance. And He does want us to have a good picture of what's ahead because it will affect us now. The Bible says, We shall see Him as He is. It says, And when we see Him, we shall be like Him. And then the Bible says, every, because every, it says, and every man that has his hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. So when you know what's coming, this will help to bring the purification of God's fire and God's spirit in our lives. 
Revelation 20 and verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. The first resurrection says, on such the second death hath no power. Amen. See, there's some people that, some people I'm sure do not even, you know, well, not, well I don't want to say do not even know, but some people don't know what the second death is, for example. But we're going to find out some of this today. Revelation 20, verse 6. And such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God. See, talking about blessed are those that, are, that take part in the first resurrection. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, the Bible reveals a little more specifically the reign with Christ See, the first resurrection is a resurrection of our bodies. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. The resurrection is a resurrection of our physical bodies. Someone say our physical bodies. Yes. Because when God resurrects the physical body, now it doesn't matter if your body has has been in the grave for two, three, four thousand years. It doesn't matter if your body was cremated. That body is going to be resurrected by the power of God. <laughs> Now, the first resurrection, it's a resurrection of the body. So, the peak, see, this is explained because these saints are already in heaven. Their spirit's there, their soul is in heaven. But we're going to look at here how that resurrection is going to happen. The body is going to be reconnected with the spirit. Then they're going to have an earthly body, but it's going to be glorified like out of Jesus' glorified body. But it's going to be that body raised now in an incorruptible state. So that's why the, res the people in the first resurrection can come back to the earth and function on this earth in their body. So you got to have a body to legally be functioning in this earth. That's why Jesus said, prepare me a body and I'll go See what I'm saying? I mean, see what the word is saying? Verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, and such the second death hath no power. So, when we're resurrected, when the saints, now, many saints have, a, have already gotten a preview of the resurrection, because when Jesus rose from the dead, many of the old saints of God that were in the tombs rose from the dead right after Jesus rose from the dead. They walked around the city of Jerusalem. They also have a right to come and go if God so permit. <laughs> and who knows, you know, maybe we have bumped into some of them old saints because they've already been resurrected. More, more than likely, God took them all to heaven. But our God is so much greater and so much more brilliant in his wisdom and knowledge than most of us know. So the second death will have no more power over us. And it says... And, and look at verse 6 at the last part. They shall be priests of God and of Christ. He, at that time, we're going to be functioning as kings and priests. Kings that have dominion over parts of the earth. Kings have have power over nations. 
Jesus said in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 or 3, He said, He that overcometh, I will give him a rod wherewith he will rule the nation. So God has a plan to rule the nations. Now we're breaking it down according to the word of God. <laughs> now, and it says here it's for a thousand years. So we're not going to just come back to the earth and live here forever now. And I believe in that what in that thousand year reign with Christ upon the earth, there'll be no problem to go, you know, take a trip back to heaven, <laughs> come back. Because we're going to be in that glorified body like Jesus has. All right, so now, look at, uh, look at verse 4 real fast. Go up to verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, we're going to get into this later, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus Amen. and for the word of God. There's thrones in heaven. There's not just one throne in heaven. There are thrones in heaven, multiple thrones, because kings have thrones. Okay. But he said, to not worship the beast, neither his image, neither receive his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They live means that they live in their physical body because everyone in heaven already is living. That's why it says in verse 5, but the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. So, he saw, he saw all the various saints that lived and reigned. That means they were brought, their bodies were brought back to life. And they're going to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again till later after the thousand years are finished. The rest of the dead he's talking about are the, the dead people who are right now experiencing the torments of hell in their spirit and in their soul in the center of the earth. They're, they're in the regions of, of darkness. They're going to stay there. But the first resurrection is for those that are blessed and holy. Someone say, Lord, bless me and make me holy. <laughs> so blessed and holy are they that have part in the first resurrection. So we're a part of that. We're not going to see any death. We're going to just keep living. If, if your body was to lay down like, like our brother Dan's was, you're just going to fly right up to heaven. There's going to be angels right there. You won't even miss your body one second because you get a new, you, you have a body that functions in the spirit world when you get there. And it's just as real as your physical body already. But because God already planned to make man upon the earth, he's not going to lose this, this earthly body either. He plans to resurrect all the bodies. He's going to resurrect the righteous. When Jesus comes, we're going to be raised from the, uh, the ones who have died, we're going to be raised from the dead first. Then we which are alive and remain when he comes, we're going to be caught up together and meet the Lord in the air and meet those that have just been resurrected. They've already been living in heaven for however long they, they've been there. They're going to come back in the clouds. We're going to meet them right there in the air, in the clouds. But the wicked dead, the unrighteous dead, they're not going to be resurrected at that time. They're going to be resurrected later, after the thousand years are finished. Look at Daniel. Go to Daniel 12 and 2. Daniel 12 and 2. Daniel's in the Old Testament. Let's 
Look at this, saints. <clears throat> and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Talking about the dead body shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. <laughs> There's going to be two resurrections. There's going to be a resurrection to everlasting life. There's going to be a resurrection to shame and everlasting contempt, condemnation, guilt. Look at the Gospel of John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 28. John 5 and 20, 28, the Lord Jesus was on the earth, and he said, Marvel not at this. Marvel not at this. In other words, don't be too amazed what I'm about to tell you. For the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice speaking of his voice. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Oh, you don't want to be in that one. You want to be with them that are in the resurrection and those that have done good unto the resurrection of life. This resurrection is talking about the bodies that are in the graves. Your spirit never stops living. Your mind never stops thinking. The minute you, you exit your body in this earth, in this life, not only will your mind keep thinking, but it's going to be thinking a lot better. Even those that, that go into the pits of hell... Their senses, their memory is expanded and increased because they're not limited by their fleshly body. The ones that go to hell after they leave this earthly body, they're in such great torments, not only because the heat and the fire and the worms and, and you know all the things that Jesus spoke about hell, but they're, they're, memor they're, they're remembering the chances they had to be saved. They're remembering every church service they were in. And the, the memories are more expanded and, and, it, and it just makes them scream and cry out to God. Those that go into heaven, our memories are, are increased, our abilities, our, our mental perceptions is, is increased as well, but way better than those that go into damnation because we're coming into contact with with the heavenly kingdom where all light comes from, from our Father. So the first resurrection, let's look at this in a little more detail in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The resurrection of the righteous is right here. God revealed it to Paul by the Spirit of God. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. He said, but I would not have you ignorant, brethren. In other words, I would not have you to lack this information and this knowledge that I'm about to share with you. See, God don't want us to be ignorant of these things. Concerning them which are asleep, those that have, their bodies have been laid to rest, but like I say, they're already in heaven. That you sorrow not, even as, even as others which have no hope. See, when we lose someone from this earth, we're not sorrowing as those that have no hope. Because, look at 
look at this, because there is great hope. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. It's telling you right here that those that are asleep, those that have laid down their bodies, God's going to bring them back with him from heaven into the earth realm again. He said, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain shall not pre precede them which are asleep. It means we're not going to go in front of those which are asleep. He says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The Lord himself is going to come down from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Remember that trumpet that we, we read about at Mount Sinai when God came down and put the mountain on smoke and the trumpet of God began to blow and get louder and louder. Now that trumpet's going to sound once again in the earth. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is the resurrection of the just. The dead in Christ, the ones who lay down their bodies, are going to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another. This is the first resurrection. Not only is God going to raise the bodies of all the saints we know from the grave. Now, they're, 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 God's going to bring them into the earth atmosphere in the clouds. And then he's going to do an amazing thing and resurrect all their bodies. And then join them together and they're so then all the bodies of all the righteous will be intact with their spirit, with their souls. But this body is going to be just like Jesus' body after he rose from the dead. Where Jesus could be talking to you one, one minute, and all of a sudden he begins to float up into the air, into the clouds. We're going to have that kind of body. Because the Bible says, He's going to change our vile bodies to be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So whatever Jesus' body is like, that's how we, ours is going to be. Now, go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. We're getting a clear picture of these end times. Of what's ahead of us. Now, after this happens, okay, there's a lot of other scriptures we could look into, a lot of other things that we could look into about the marriage supper of the Lamb and, and um, different things in heaven. See, when we're caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, we're going to forever be with Him. We're going back with Him. It's going to be the wedding party of us as the bride and Jesus as the bridegroom. See, in Christ there's neither male nor female. But we're going to be united with Jesus with a great celebration with the Father. The angels are going to host this great party. Now, a little while later now, a little while after that, Some say, you know, this, this is the part I'm not too sure about, but I'm going to tell you what I'm sure about. But some say that that party is going to last about seven earthly years when they look at the times of Daniel and different things like that. But I don't know that for sure. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. Some say when we go back with them, because the Antichrist is going to rise to power, just like the Bible says, the mark of the beast is going to hit the earth and all of that stuff. They say it's going to last about seven years. 
Now, after that, this is where we're going to pick back up here in Revelation 19 and verse 11. This is how we are coming back with Jesus to reign upon the earth. This is when, after the Antichrist has already taken power, all of the world is going to fall under the control of this of this leader, this Antichrist. And look at verse 11. John said this. He said, And I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called Faithful and True. He that sat on his horse, Horse. This is Jesus sitting on a white horse, heavens open. He is called faithful and true. And he had a he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself only knew his name uh, that was written. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew except he himself. Wait, well, I already read that. And look at verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Back in the end times when Jesus is going to exit heaven. They're still going to know him. His name is the Word of God. That's the Word of God that was in the beginning. That without him, nothing was made that was made. And here he is in physical form. Exiting on a white horse. Glory to God. (laughs) We're going to see Jesus come back. In a greater way than King David ever led a army troop into battle. Right now, whoever calls on his name, he will graciously save them. But there's coming a day where he's going to tread out the wine press of the wrath of all men. And he would he would prefer everyone be saved, but he's giving everyone a very good chance to be saved. See, this is part of the reason. This is part of. Into the eyes 
of an animal, which specifically was the eyes of a lion. Then as I'm looking, first his eyes changed, then his whole appearance, he changed into a, a real lion. <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't just the shape or the form, but he changed into a real lion. You know, lions are strong and tough. And they said, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. Speaking of Jesus. Now when I saw him, I said, the lion of Judah. <laughs> I didn't, you know, it just came out of me when I, when I saw him. And then he turned back into himself. And left me with that impression of his great love. And I couldn't figure it, figure it out for months. Like, why did he change into a lion? Why did he do that? You know, I, I know the Bible says he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. But I've never known him that he could even do something like that. That he would change himself physically in the appearance of a lion or anything like that. See, but this day, see, look, in verse 12, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head many crowns. Go to verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven, followed him on white horses. Here's Jesus, the leader of armies. Oh, it said armies. Armies are going to follow Jesus. Now, have you ever sang that song? I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord, I'm a soldier in the army. You're meant to be in this army that's going to be in the white horses behind the Lord Jesus. Breaking forth out of heaven, all of us are white horses. Oh, we're talking about armies here. See, this is the sign of Jesus that's going to be manifested in the earth at this time. And he's not doing it out of a desire to hurt anyone. He's not going to come in armies because he don't like people. He already died for everybody. These are people that have rejected him completely and they said they don't need him, they don't want him. This is what Jude prophesied about. Remember we looked at this Friday, Jude said, Behold, and not Jude, but Jude was saying what Enoch said. Enoch, seventh from Adam, prophesied, saw that, saw this day, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all the ungodly, for all their ungodly speeches and all their ungodly sayings. This is what Enoch was prophesying about. And here it is right here. This has not happened yet, of course. It's going to happen. Armies in heaven, verse 14, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Have you ever seen an army clothed in fine, white, clean linen? <laughs> no need to get camouflaged here. No need to get all dirty. For the king of kings is leading this great army, uh, the, the armies and the troops of heaven. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that, had, that with it he should smite the nations. Look, look at this. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. This is when the Lord Jesus is going to come back and begin his thousand year reign. And we are going to reign on the earth. This is what them saints were singing about, saying, you have redeemed us to God, and we shall reign on the earth. This is exactly what they're waiting for in heaven. Now we're waiting to get to heaven. We want to taste heaven first. We're not looking forward to this day to come back. 
I know I'm not. I'm not really looking forward to coming back. But I'll, I'll tell you this. If Jesus says, let's go, we're going to go with him wherever he leads us. Amen? <laughs> Paul said, so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to be with him, with him in heaven, and we're going to follow him on the, on the white horse and back to the earth. But look at this. Look at verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Oh, this is when God, our gracious Father, Is going to have to cause a reckoning to happen in the earth. He's waiting now, very patient, for anyone who will call on the name of his son Jesus. But in this day, after all of this happened, after he already resurrected the just, we disappeared from the earth. Great signs and wonders appearing in the heavens. That anyone with, with half a brain should realize, hey, I need God. <laughs> He's going to give him every chance possible. But here you're going to have people that are going to stand up against him even unto that day. Oh, these are the people that he's going to come treading out the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. It's not going to be a nice picture. Look at verse 16. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. On his cloak, it's going to say King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Even on his thigh. So he's going to be riding a horse and his, his thigh is going to be, you know, the, the robe is going to be hanging down and you're going to see on his thigh King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Angels going to stand in the sun. Probably going to be one of them huge angels. That some people have seen angels that are, that are even as big as the earth. Believe it or not. And he's going to declare to all the fowls, come eat the flesh of everybody on the earth. Or the flesh of these that are disobedient, at least. Now look at verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sent on the horse and against his army. They said, come on, Jesus. Let's fight. See what I'm saying? So these are the type of people he's going to come as a mighty warrior, much more stronger and mightier and swift in battle than David or Moses ever. They, they gather the different kings and the beasts that are following this beast, that this ruler who has done miracles and deceived the whole world. Look at verse 20. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that worked miracles before him. 
with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast. Them that worship his image. The beast, the, there is a false prophet that was working with the beast that deceived people to take that mark. At this time, this, see, this is after the beast has ruled. So there's got to be after the rapture, rapture, and then after the beast and the antichrist has taken over. That's why he's going to come back. He's going to he's going to hit the beast first. Look, the beast was taken, and the false prophet. Look at the end. These both were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Took them alive. Can you imagine? Here's Jesus coming. First one, let's knock out the top ones first. Take them, cast them alive into the lake of fire, alive. Didn't even kill them first. The fire, lake of fire that burns with burning with brimstone. It says, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse. Jesus. That sword that's coming out of his mouth after after the beast and false prophet are taken alive. That sword out of Jesus' mouth just slew everyone else who was standing against him. <coughs> of him that said on earth, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So all the birds came after Jesus, just slew them all dead. Fowls are going to come and just eat up the flesh. These wicked people. See, turn to Jude real fast. Turn to Jude. Now we're, we're going to be with Jesus watching all this happen. We're going to be behind them on the white horses. Because we're getting ready to take over earth at this time. <laughs> Luke 1 and 14. And Enoch also. Oh, there's only one chapter, so there's nothing to <laughs> And Enoch also, the seven from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. We're, oh, we're looking in to the gift of prophecy on Friday. Here, Enoch. Just seven from Adam. This is before Noah. This is before God destroyed the earth the first time. Prophesied of something that didn't even yet happen. Prophesied of this day when the Lord is going to come with ten thousands of his sins to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly. See, these are ungodly people. Among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all of their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are going to be very ungodly people, in other words. <laughs> they're going to speak against Jesus, and they're going to get they're going to get what's coming to them. It says these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speak of great swelling words. So these are the people that are going to get it real good. Now look at, go back to Revelation 20 now. Go back to Revelation 20. We're just getting a little glimpse of this picture here that's lying before us. Alright, actually, go back to Revelation 19 and just glance at verse 20, 19 and 20 where it says and the beast was taken now remember this is after Jesus is coming with armies in heaven following him, the beast was taken with him the false prophet which worked the miracle, look at the bottom part of that, these were both cast alive in the lake of fire and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. But that's not the end of the battle. Look at the next verse, first verse of chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. 
In other words, he's coming down with a great chain, and, and this angel, I can just imagine, okay, where is he? I'm looking for the main one now. Look at this, saints. Having a key to the bottom and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And bound him a thousand years. <laughs> After his beast, false prophet, and all the wicked, the ungodly that, that confronted Jesus, wiped them out. Now, let's get the main one right here. Gonna, this is the time he's going to be stopped. Satan is going to be stopped at this time. Bound with this great chain from this angel. A thousand years. Now that's the time when we're going to be reigning on the earth. See, Jesus came to take over. Now he, he gets rid of Satan. Cast him in the bottom. All the ungodly people that are uh, against him, dead. And then who's on the earth? Jesus. And those are <laughs> right. The Bible speaks of him going into Jerusalem and setting up his, his throne, an earthly throne in Jerusalem. Many things are going to happen. He's going to, he's going to begin to transform the earth in many ways. The lion's going to lay down with the lamb. The Bible says different things like that. And the animals are going to become friendly. And it's going to be a glorious time. Now, there's still going to be other people. I don't think he's going to kill everyone because if, if you read in Isaiah, it talks about there's still going to be other people living. It's not all going to be completely righteous completely saved he, he, he's coming to kill those that have refuted him for sure, those are all going to be slain the armies that came against him, the ungodly following the beast but it appears there's going to be some people that, that will have gone through the tribulation and still be on the earth don't really know Jesus that well like, like we do <clears throat> so Satan is going to be bound in uh, for a thousand years. Look at verse 3. And cast them into the bottomless pit and shut them up and set a seal upon them that he should deceive the nations no more. But this isn't the end of the devil. It's only for a thousand years. It says, till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. Now, we don't know, we don't understand all the reasons why God is going to do it this way. Because he got, he, he's going to be released from that, from that prison. Look at verse 7, go, go to verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now, he's going to be there for a good long time. We're going to be reigning on the earth. I told my wife, you know, maybe the Lord Jesus will allow me and her to go fly over to Congo and be kings and priests over Congo for a while. <laughs> I mean, we're going to be reigning it all here. I mean, Congo is big enough. You got several kings over there. It's a big nation. But we're going to be reigning as kings and priests. It's going to be a glorious time on the earth. But look at verse 7. He shall be loosed out of his prison. Verse 8. And shall go out to deceive the nation. Which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, Magog. To gather them together to battle. The devil's going to be so mad. He's going to be loosed out. And he's actually going to convince people in the nations. When Christ Jesus is on the earth. To come and Come against Jesus. I mean, I suppose it's going to be a revolt. 
They're going to rise up on the news and say no, and they're going to try to accuse Jesus once again and say no, he's not right, and this and that, and we have a right to worship who we want to, and who says Jesus is the only way, and you know, just like they're doing right now, you know, that spirit of Antichrist is in the earth already. Who are you to say Jesus is the only way? We need we need all common commonplace of all religions. You know, that spirit is already here in the earth. If you're going to pray in the name of Jesus, then you've got to let us pray in the name of Krishna or Buddha or different things. You know, that, that spirit is already working in, in, in governments in different places. And I suppose it's, it's going to be similar stuff going to happen in that same time the devil's going to deceive and delude people just like he has deceived many people to follow false religions in this thing. When Jesus is the only way, here he's reigning on the earth and we're reigning with him. But there's going to be a revolt against him one last time. He shall go out to deceive the nations, in verse 8, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. The devil's going to convince an innumerable company of people. I don't know how long this deception part will last, you know. When you read the Bible, you can't read something like this and say it's going to happen in one day. I mean, that right there, the devil going out to deceive, that could be hundreds of years, you know. We don't know. Whenever you read the Bible, the book of Genesis and all of they're just giving an, an overview of what happened, you know. When, when God made Adam, when, when, when Abel killed uh, when Cain killed Abel and different things. That's why people wonder, well, Cain went out and married a wife in another land. Where did those people come from? Well, it's because the Bible is not telling you everything that happened. That whole thing where, where, where um, Adam and Eve had children and then they had Cain and Abel, but if you keep reading, it says, and, and they had sons and daughters. <laughs> Oh, Adam lived about 900 years. How many sons and daughters could he produce and they produce and they produce? That's where Cain went and found other descendants from his own father, but from some of his other children. Adam had much more than just Cain and Abel and Seth. Because if, if you read in the other chapters, see, it doesn't say it all in order, but if you find it, I think it's in chapter 5, it says, and, and Adam had sons and daughters. So there's many, time had passed by, so whenever you're reading the Bible, don't think, oh yeah, this is just going to happen just in a snap. You know, devil's just going to be loose and all of a sudden armies are going to appear against Jesus. You know, this could be hundreds of years or it could be 50 years, we don't know. And they're going to gather against Jesus in verse 9, and they went up on the breath of the earth and come past the camp of the saints. About. And the beloved city, and fire came down. From God out of heaven and devoured them. When they when they start getting near to Jesus, it is not going to be much of a battle. These armies are going to converge against, you know, I guess Jesus is going to be having a great assembly that day because He's going to have a great camp, and I suppose many of us will be in that camp in that day when the devil comes, and then they're just going to get close. Fire from God is going to come down and devour up those armies. Look at this, saints. Now, here's the end of the devil. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone now. Where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. This is going to be the end of that old dragon, the serpent. The torment's going to rise. Now, after the devil is tormented, now we're going to look at the resurrection of the unjust. It says it right here. In verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that 
had set upon it, from whose faith, face the earth and the heaven fled away. This earth and the skies, at this time, there's going to be no more need. They're going to flee away. And there was found no place for them. Oh, this is, this is the final reckoning day. And I saw the dead. Now, all of the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged on those things which were written in the books according to their works. Now look at this, saints. So all the dead, and the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which are in them. So death and hell, that's where people go right now that don't serve Jesus. They reject him. They're in hell right now. At this day, see, they're going to be in there all the time. You don't want to go there. <laughs> you don't want to go there. It's, it's a long time. Then finally, after all that happens with the thousand years and all that stuff, and later on, then hell is going to finally deliver up all those dead people to stand before God. So anyone who's in hell right now, at this day, they're going to have to stand before this great white throne. And it says, and death and hell, well, it says, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. Because they rejected grace. See, they rejected Jesus. Whatever bad works we do, we have a chance right now to be covered under the blood of Jesus, so we're not judged according to our works as far as heaven or hell. We're rewarded according to our works as saints. But we're not judged. We don't get into heaven because of our works. We get in there because of the blood of Jesus and the word of our testimony we overcome. But here, death and hell delivered up the dead. They're going to be judged according to their works. And look at this, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See, remember, blessed and holy is he that has part in that first resurrection, on whom the second death has no power. This won't concern us whatsoever. We're not even going to be standing before God at this time. We're not going to stand, and we're not going to have to stand before that great, great white throne judgment. We're going to already be totally in the camp of Jesus. These are all the ones that have died without Jesus. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. After spending thousands of years or hundreds of years in hell, Now at this time, if they're going to be judged according to their works, if they were a whoremonger, if they were a liar, if they were this and that, their, their works will, will condemn them and they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And then uh, the next verse, from the, the first verse of the next chapter, we'll, we'll close with this. John said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. That's talking about the skies, the atmosphere. This heaven is it's talking about the clouds and all of that stuff around the earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. He says, and I saw, he said, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. See, because that heaven's going to still be there. You know, the, the heavenly kingdom. There's different heavens. Prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. 
And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And we'll close with this. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. God is going to make all things new at that time. Isn't that so good? <laughs> Jesus. We are going to experience some great things with Jesus. Oh, we got a, lot, a big future. It's not over yet. We're just getting started. God is just getting started to rectify some things, and we're going to be a part of it. Don't you be found on the other side. Don't you be found getting coughed up out of hell somewhere. <laughs> to stand before God, because there's not much chance for you. Because if, you're not, if your name was not written in the, in the book of life, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And if your name was in the book of life, you wouldn't have been in hell to begin with. So that means like all of those people getting brought up out of hell after being tormented, now stand before God and they're going to see God and they're going to have that moment. And they're going to look in the book of life. The Lamb's book of life is the only is the book of everyone that said, Jesus, I trust in you. That's why that third day, that guy said, there's going to be a day of judgment coming. I know what I would say. I trust in Jesus. <laughs> See, but we're already going to be with Jesus. We're already going to be reigning on this earth and everything. Then at this day, when, when the final battle happens, Satan's going to be cast in the lake of fire. All of a sudden, See, what Peter describes what's going to happen, the earth and all that's in it is going to be burned with fervent heat. And everything's going to melt. All the buildings, this whole earth is just going to melt down to nothing and it's going to flee away. There's going to be no more place found for the skies and, and the earth as we know it right here. That's why he said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away. I know the Bible says, you know, God made the earth not to be moved. That just means for the time he wants it here. The earth is going to stand. No one's going to, you know, that that just means global warming is not going to destroy the earth. <laughs> the earth ain't going nowhere until God says it's going somewhere, you see. Because this earth is going to pass away, just like the Bible says. You've got to take the whole word and write it to buy it. So we're going to be dwelling in a new heaven and a new earth. Peter said the earth is going to be burned up with fervent heat. The elements thereof are going to melt down. He says, wherein we look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. You can look that up for yourself in one of the books Peter wrote. I think it's in 2 Peter chapter 3. You can read all about it right there. So, this is amazing. The things that are ahead of us. How should, so Peter said, I remember Peter said, how should you ought to live seeing that you look forward to such things? So you got to read that. Find that in Second Peter, if you can, this week and read it for yourself. Peter says, so, so then how should you live? Seeing all these things will be dissolved. Seeing this whole earth is going to be dissolved with fire. How many of you are glad you're on the Lord's side? Oh, we're going to stay with Jesus. <laughs> Let's pray for one another that every one of us will stay with Jesus and make it. If, if you see your brother or sister stumbling or falling, the Bible says, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. And watch yourself, lest you also fall. As long as you've got your eyes on Jesus and you're looking to him and you're, you're following him, if you're trusting in him, you're following him, and you want to do right, you know, people are at all different levels. Some people are struggling with different things. Some people aren't struggling with those things. Some people struggle with tobacco or 
or alcohol, but other people is like tobacco and alcohol, they, they don't think about that at all. <laughs> Some people might be struggling with other things. Some people might be struggling with the spirit of pride, jealousy, or anger, or hatred. Other people, they don't deal with that. You know what I'm saying? But no matter what level you're at, if your eyes are on Jesus, you're confessing Jesus day in and day out. You're not afraid to confess his name. You start your day asking him for grace and you end the day thanking him for a good day with all his grace. And, you, and you're just serving him in every way you know. Oh, you'll make it. Glory to God. <laughs> his, you know, that's what his grace is all about. You're trusting in him. You're following him. Don't concentrate on your problems. Concentrate on Jesus. If you happen to fall... Don't let the devil now hold you down and condemn you. If you happen to stumble and fall, say, wait a minute, Jesus died for this sin. I confess my sin. He's faithful just to forgive me this sin. I'm cleansed from all my righteousness. And now go walk with God. Say, God, I'm cleansed. I'll leave. <laughs> God understands, you know, about this earth and, and the stuff we face. But that's not to say you deliberately sin and then, oh, God, I forgive you. Know, I forget, you know, I'm not saying that now. <laughs> he just keep on saying different things like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. This is Thank you, Jesus. physically that we don't want to go. 